and I ain't got no house. You don't think that somebody is mine, he would have said, now you know, if I can make money coming to the mouth of a fish so that they can go pay taxes, then certainly I can find me a shark that can hold a little more money that I can build me a house with. See, you don't think about stuff like that. How can Bishop say that? Because it's scripture. Look at what the devil says and he says, listen, why don't you, why don't you, I know you're hungry, Jesus. Why don't you take and turn these stones in the grave? Mm -hmm. uh, man should not live by that alone. But by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. He was tempted. Mm -hmm. He can understand you. But he has a remedy for it. He had to go through his period of testing. And then guess what? He was chosen, watch this, from this, from this text, he was chosen from among the sheep. Yeah. He says, go get me a lamb, but pull it from among the sheep. Now watch this. He didn't say pull it from the sheep. He says also or from the goats. I want you to get him from the compliant ones, the docile sweet ones, yeah. and from them that raise him. Have you ever read that passage clearly? He said, I want you to give me somebody who knows what it is to be good and knows what it is to be bad. I didn't say he did it because he was at all points tempted. Now here's the rest of that verse. Yet without sin. So whereas we crossed over and went on into sin, he said, uh-uh. Can't cross that line. She may be fine, but I'm not going to see it may be intoxicating, but I'm not going to drink. I may be tempted for the riches of the world, but I'm not going to lie, falsify, cheat, steal, step outside of God's plan to cause it to come to me. I'm going to stay in the wheel. Amen. Now watch this. I'm coming close. I'm coming too close. God, get out of this. Oh, Jesus. He says, my God, where did the time go? He says, listen, now I want you to take this blood. If I say blood. Blood. He says, now listen to this. He says, well, before he says, listen. I want, you to, I want you to tell Israel, listen, listen, I want you to take Israel, the congregation of Israel, everybody come together, and I want, you to, I want them to kill the lamb. If I say it one more time, my sin, my sin. Kill, Jesus. kill Jesus. It did. He said, I want you to kill the lamb, but it's a part of the plan. Don't get upset, it's a part of the plan. It was a part of, listen, nothing was going to satisfy the wrath but the blood. It was necessary. Now watch this. He says, I want you to call the whole congregation together. Now check this out. Now every house got to have a lamb. That, this, is, this, is, this is millions of people. Which means there had to be millions of lambs. Everybody had to kill a lamb at the same time on that same evening. Now watch what he says do with it. If I say the blood. blood. Let's take the blood now. And I want you to strike it on the post. I want you to take the blood and put it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house. Herein is the exercise of anointing with oil. Now, usually we use oil now instead of blood, but this is where it's derived from. You ever done a house blessing? Yeah. Everybody want to bless the house when they say strike the post, you know, over the door? Y'all don't see that? Yeah. I don't, y'all. I just can't even see that. You, you pray over the house. You sanctify it and you strike the posts. It's, it's, it's symbolic of covering in the Holy Spirit or covering in the blood. It, it, is, it is to ward off, to, to solidify covenant with God as Israel was in covenant with the Father and to hold back, listen to this now, not just the hand of evil but the hand of judgment. So it says you take the blood and I want you to strike it on the post, both sides and the top. That way anybody that enters in through that door, they have to come through the blood to get in. Listen to this. And anybody that goes out of that house, they got to go through the blood to go out. So either way it goes, you got to be covered. Now let's go to Revelations for a minute. Revelation. Revelation. 
We brought the revelation. We got to go all the way to the end. I know you guys know I had some scriptures in between. In the revelation. We brought the revelation, the 13th chapter. Revelation 13. Revelation 13, and to read this quickly, we're going to get out of here because I've got to get to our communion. Listen, he says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, where one is. I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the, out of the sea, even of seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon the heads of the name of blasphemy. Now, now God Almighty, uh, Revelation is such a tough book, I can't get into all the symbolism, but let me say this to you very, very quickly, try to bring some understanding. Beast usually represents governmental nations. These are rulership by man. And he says, listen, in, in many instances, not in all instances, but in this instance, it means rulership by man. So when we talk about seven heads, we're talking about presidents. We're talking about leaders, world leaders. We're talking about governments rising up because we're dealing with time and who's in control and who's leading. Okay? So, so this is a lot for me to try to throw at you in 30 seconds. But just trust Bishop for a second, okay? And it says that they had crowns on their head. There were different dispensations of leadership. And, and the names of them was called blasphemy. In other words, they were not followers of God. They were not followers of God. And that's why we see governmental chaos in the world now. Because the nation in whom God is their God, the people rejoice. When the righteous rule, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, the people mourn. That's why our countries are having so much hard time now because we got unrighteousness in leadership. Amen. I'm going to start calling on names, but this is foolishness. I posted on Facebook the other day, I have never seen it in my 50 years of life. Grown men stand up on television and say, we're the best hope for America. We're your next leader. And then you stand up there and talk about your phallic prowess. I'm saying it to you. Yo, that's who's bigger than who. How foolish is that? Did you say you want to lead me and represent me? I'm sorry I had a moment. Watch this, Jesus. And they worshiped the dragon and gave power to the beast, verse 4, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. 42 months. Where do you know the number 42 from, preachers? Preachers, 42, 42, 42 generations. Jesus came through 40 and 2 generations to bring salvation into the world. And the enemy is going to war against him for 40 and 2 months. It's a year and a month, it's the same. I'm sorry. Months. 40 and 2 months. So everything, listen, that God does in the kingdom of light, Satan is going to try to undo in the kingdom of darkness. So that means where you're blessed at, he's going to try to bring a curse in everything he does. His job is to kill, steal, and destroy. So look at this. Can we back up into this backwards? Where you think you're in trouble is where you really are winning. Because he's got to bring you the empty of your situation. He's got to mess with your finances when you're truly blessed. He's got to mess with your marriage when you're truly overcoming. He has to go counter to everything God has done for you. And so he does the same with Jesus. Watch this. Go ahead, next, next verse. He says, listen, for 42 months, verse 5, verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwelt in heaven. Next verse, I got to get to this. And it was given unto him to make war with the who? And to overcome them. And power was given him over all the kindreds and tongues and nations. Next verse. Watch this. Oh, hallelujah. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of, listen, of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now watch this. Let's draw a parallel. In Exodus we saw that they had to take a lamb. 
and slay them to get the blood to cover them. Remember we just read it. But in Revelation, watch this and let me point out something. From the foundation of the world, that means before God ever said, let there be. Because when you lay a foundation, you start to build, right? When you be dreaming, I mean, when they get ready to build a house, they clear the land and they lay a foundation and then they start to build. So watch this. The church, the believers, the saints cannot come into the kingdom unless the foundation is first laid. That's why the Bible says that you should not build on any other foundation except Christ Jesus. So if Christ is the foundation, that means he had to be in place before you could ever start to build up. That's why he's slain from the foundation of the world. So before God said, let there be, before we ever had a chance to sin, before we ever had a chance to fall short, he said, I'm going to give an answer to the problem before the problem ever exists. So that means before you sin, watch this, your forgiveness was in place. Before you fell short, your come up was in place. Before you ever came and got a sin nature, your righteousness was in place through Christ. If I say the blood. Now notice the difference in these two lambs. The first lamb was, if you're reading it, pay attention. Those who are in fact probably watch this. It was a lowercase L. But this lamb. Bishop. Would you say it one more time for guys? It's an uppercase L. And we know when we see an uppercase in scripture, we're now talking about deity. So now this man we talking about is Jesus the Christ. Listen to this. Watch this. This is going to mess with you. Who died for sin in heaven before he ever died at Calvary in the earth. He was slain from the foundation of the world. He had already agreed, Father. Uh-huh. I know I got to come by with this old dirty virgin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know I know that man so if you come from a Catholic background. That was, she was dirty because she was human. Remember, she was fallen just like you. Amen. She was fallen. I'm going to come through this dirty woman. I'm going to come through this man. I'm going to come through the ridicule. But I know I got to die for them. I got to die for them in the natural as I have agreed to die for them in heaven. The agreement was already made. So listen to this. If you're not saved today, it's only because you won't come into agreement with what Christ has already done for you. It's available, but you got to receive it. It's here, but you got to want it. So just like he took the blood, listen, and you can't slay a lamb without the shedding of blood. Colossians 1.14 says, Colossians 1.14, give me that quickly. Colossians 1.14 says, and I'm done. He says, listen, it took the blood to do this for us. It took the blood to do this for us. He was slain before the foundation of the world. He had agreed to it. He had agreed to it, but he had to come into time and die for us. Colossians 1.14, you got it? Hallelujah, I'm pushing you. I know I'm pushing you fast. I know I'm pushing you hard. Colossians 1.14. In whom we have redemption, what through? Who is the his? It's Christ Jesus. Through his blood and even. Can I tell you this, believer? You're forgiven before you ever mess up. But you have to appropriate the blood to your life. Now watch this, and I'm done. When you appropriate the blood, it will cause you to live it right before you mess it up. You can't just apply it after you mess up. When you realize you've covered the blood, then you put it all the way back to the level of temptation. And you say, okay, there is no temptation given unto me whereby my God has not provided me with a way of escape. You can get out of this. You can get beyond it. You don't have to smoke it. You don't have to drink it. You don't have to sleep with it. You don't have to if you apply the blood on the fire, it'll work for you. Let's stand to our feet.
I'm sorry, my time is up.